What's your biggest turn off? I do this and I'm aware I do it and I actively try to not do it but sometimes I do it anyway without thinking and realize I did it after. It's almost like, rather than for the purpose one-upping, I'm doing it to carry on the topic of conversation dot 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 but I usually only say anything if I have a more cool addition to the topic than what the person said before me. Otherwise it'd be too boring to bring up. Thinking about it dot 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 I think I do this most with my brother-in-law dot 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 dude probably hates my guts ha. Huh? I had this Tinder date that said I was weird because I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as a sport, hobby. Also said some other pretty normal stuff about me was weird. Then she started making homophobic comments. We live in a big city so it's very outside the norm. So I told her it's horrible what she's saying and ended the date. Depends. If all their exes in general were assholes, or if they talk about trouble with lots of people in general. Massive red flag. I've had exes that were abusive. I have a couple of exes that did dickhead things like cheat. But it's not gonna be the highlight of the conversation of someone I'm trying to see now. But there's that old saying, if everyone around you is an asshole, it's because you're an asshole. Some guy dumped a beer on my head at a bar in February of 2020. I kept drinking and didn't engage him, commenting that beer is good for my skin. He was being walked out by the bouncer screaming you fucking beta, I own you. It wasn't because I'm tough, I wear mostly cat themed novelty shirts. I just had no idea how to handle this situation without getting my ass handed to me, so I did nothing. And it worked. The dude Alf had himself out of his own credit card behind the counter according to Tuesday Bartender. Dudes are weird. I read somewhere that in adult conversations, men spend 55% of the time talking about another person who is not present. Women spend 67% of the time doing the same. Gossip is built into our brains somehow. We are intrinsically interested in other people. Some people believe this is due to our ancestral roots in tribal communities. When humans first developed language, they probably used it to discuss who was loyal, who couldn't be trusted, who was lazy, and who was sleeping with who. When living in a small tribe, this information was invaluable. Gossips thrived, and they passed on their loudmouth genes to the rest of us. Lol. Someone who isn't into me. It sounds obvious but I've gone on dates where the other person seemed like they really didn't want to be there. Like their mind was elsewhere or the owe me the courtesy of a date for some reason. I'm a big boy. I don't really want to hear your shallow reason as to why you don't want to be here but just be straight with me and stop wasting both of our time. This one pisses me off too. Prior to dating my ex just about everyone I would match on dating apps seemed somewhat interested and dateable. Then after we broke up and I eventually put myself back out there by making new accounts, either everyone just replies with closed answers that I can't play off of or they will seem really nice but not in a you seem interesting let's see if we are a good match way but a more customer service wine I'm just going on a date with you because that just how this works even though I have already made up my mind type of way yep dot 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 people who are mean to others that just happened to be weaker than them dot 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 makes my blood boil my sister-in-law had some Insert swear word here, parked too close to the handicapped spot that they were parked in, in the lined area of the handicapped spot, which made it impossible for her to maneuver her medically handicapped child's wheelchair. Then, on top of that, they were verbally abusing her as she tried picking him up, getting him in the vehicle, and wrangling his chair. Such chiness, is that a word? Makes me so angry. Wish I had been there. I used to think this was a myth. That when people said about this particular stench that they were describing someone that skipped deodorant that day but fuck me I took my kids to an indoor playground a few weeks ago and there was this guy's there that smelled absolutely foul, through a mask. I could smell him from 15 meters away and he stunk out the playground. Never in my life have I smelt anything like it, I don't even know how he got that way. I worked with a woman for a while who constantly talked about her mental disability. She would always go on about how one conversation with her doctor she could just go out on permanent disability and never work again. 
She constantly used her disability as an excuse as to why she didn't have to work or come in when she wasn't feeling it. When someone would try to discipline her she would pull the I'm mentally disabled card every single time. No one should be made to feel ashamed or discriminated against for any kind of disability, let alone a mental one. People like her though is what make it hard for others to take those disabilities seriously. I'm with you. As a general rule, if you're the sort that often apologizes to guests because of the mess this likely doesn't actually apply to you. Not having done that night's dishes yet is acceptable, as is laundry hanging to dry indoors or toys lying about after a child. Dishes that are actually growing things in them is unacceptable. Clutter on every surface of your living room is unacceptable. The entire floor being covered with Lego despite the youngest person in the house being in their 20s is commendable. Gaslighters will find a way to exploit it though. There are people out there who will notice that you're in a bad mood and they will try to push you even further into it. Then when you've finally had enough and lash out, they act like you're the crazy one. If you notice someone in a bad mood or a bad state of mind and they are not your close friend, leave them the fuck alone. If I'm in a bad mood, the last thing I want is some random people telling me to smile or that it's gonna get better or any of that shit. I hear that man, my mom was bulimic when I was growing up, catching her in the bathroom sicking up the meal she just cooked for us all. Heartbreaking. She now has a mouthful of dentures and can't eat anything but bland gluten-free bread cause her stomach is so messed up. She's only 55. I met a girl when I was 17 who was perfect, in every single way. Then I popped onto my bathroom thinking she was downstairs and caught her with a toothbrush down her throat. Man. I was unsure if I should walk away or go through the same stuff I did with my mom. I stayed with her for 5 years and battled her issues with her. Then we broke up on year 5 and I don't think I could put myself through that again. What those tipping well means? I mean inform me you where it's not as obligatory as it's in US might be but like any tip should be accepted and thanked for if there is no obvious shrewdness to it as leaving one cent or whatever. Not leaving a tip when you're happy with your meal is not rude in any way. And even more or less rude is the action of leaving even a small tip. Poor hygiene is at the top of my list. I briefly dated a guy 11 years younger than me and he told me on the first date that he doesn't like wearing deodorant because of the aluminum in it. We discussed brands that don't have aluminum, animal cruelty free, and I even offered to make him one since I've made them before. I have no problem with people making the best choices for themselves and their bodies, especially if you're into your own musk and sense. But after a six-mile hike in the rain together I just couldn't bear myself to be around him anymore. That Chewbacca in the spin cycle smell is not for me. At the very least hit your pits with a dab of something. My girlfriend of four months tried to hold it in in front of me. She held it in so much it compacted her bowel. I took her to hospital. She was in a lot of pain. She held my hand, looked into my eyes said darling I'm so sorry and let off a fart not dissimilar to chainsaw over a number of seconds. Smelled like a combination of freedom and Donner kebabs. She's a beautiful, slim, elegant looking lady and her farts still make me laugh out loud. FYI together 8 years, happily married for 4. Unconditional love tolerates bad smells. Honest speak. Unnecessary criticism. I was high-key ready to surprise my wife with a romantic night, dinner, music, spa massage, relaxation, kids at the grandparents for the night, the works. And as soon as I got home I can't believe you do this. I can't believe you did this this way. I do it this way and I can't believe you do it like this have to say that nothing I do is wrong or incorrect or inappropriate it's just not how she would do it. Cancelled all my plans and just had a night in watching TV cause the immediate unnecessary criticism killed all the mood. I had this girl at work that was hot in my opinion and just the other day she told me that she dreamt that me and her had sex and then had a baby, was a turn off. I told her you don't tell people you don't know stuff like that. She was hot but she was lazy called and sick every other day and once she did arrive at work she was on her phone all the time. Also turn off.
someone that doesn't try to spell things. Errors are fine. It's just, call me cold and fickle, but I'm always happier if I am looking up to someone I interpret as a bit smarter than the average person. Myself, I'm going to have zero respect if you type like a fucking moron and ghost you because I just feel too guilty even thinking about being a straightforward dick about how I perceive your intelligence. Doesn't matter how hot or not you are. I just can't. Physically, big body parts, personality, just being the kind of person that talks others down, has catty behavior, emotionally and mentally immature, women that make enemies or other women, and women that feel that every woman is after her man. Jealousy. Also, women that accuse others of being a cheater for having female friends, and finally, women that have the all men are trash attitude. Insincerity. There's nothing more telling and repulsive as getting to know a sweet, respectable dude, only to see he and his friends joke together. He'd never make a rape joke to you because he knows you wouldn't approve but when the nasty jokes fly left and right around the buddies you're getting to know what he'd approve of if you weren't there. Not to mention the outrage that he's been acting fake to gain your approval up until now. This could actually get some flack, but... Smoking of any kind. I grew up with parents and people they knew constantly smoking either cigarettes or marijuana. It ruins your houses, clothes, cars. You could be a 10. Once I see any kind of shit like that in your mouth, I'm out. Lack of creativity and imagination. Lack of desire to be better at something. It could be as small as making macrame for all I care. It's the dedication I want to see. Lack of a sense of humor and inability to have a good time just messing around doing nothing around town. Not every date has to be super expensive, folks. Chemical dependency, not counting prescribed medication. I'm talking about people who make pot a personality, aftermarket pills, cocaine, etc. Making fun of disabled people, looking down on them, bad parenting. Making kids come last. Piss poor money management skills. I get not everyone can be great at this, but there is a fine line between bearable and not. Lack of intelligence. Lack of the general use of intelligence. Most of you went to school for at least 12 to 13 years, not four. Spell words correctly. ETA. Willful ignorance of even the basest goings on especially now. Anti-vaxxers, hyper-conspiracy theorists, worrying what other people think about every single thing. Fuck em. Edit, apparently this is controversial. Cool. 1. Bitchy attitude. If you are an insufferable piece of shit, I don't care how pretty you are, there's not a snowball's chance in hell I'm dating you. 2. Won't shut up about politics, societal issues, conflicts on the other side of the world etc. Just save it, some people just want to enjoy living their lives without worrying their asses off about something they can't even help change, I'm one of those people, and if you can't go 5 seconds without bringing up why this presidential candidate is bad, or what we should normalize, or what country thousands of miles away needs our help, then I want you staying far, far away from me. Bonus, negative points if you actively choose to antagonize me for not wanting to associate myself with the headache, if you say I'm part of the problem or on the side of the oppressor simply because I want to live my fucking life with as little worries as possible, then the door is open for you to walk out of my life before I deliberately choose to kick you out. 3. Zodiac Obsession If you genuinely believe the day you happen to pop out of your mom's vagina is somehow going to determine your personality, then please, do yourself and me a favor, and keep your mouth shut, and stay the fuck away from me. The last time I got stuck in a room with a bunch of Zodiac nonsense spouting morons, I visibly wanted to off myself, for, shoves their lifestyle, views, beliefs etc. Down my throat constantly. I don't care whether or not you're religious, part of the LGBTQ, on a certain side of politics, vegan, etc. I respect that, but the moment you start constantly shoving all that in my face, down my throat, and up my ass, somehow stick it into every conversation no matter how unrelated, and just generally don't shut up about it for two seconds, then congratulations. You've lost all my respect and I do not want to associate myself with you any longer. And that's about it. 
Hey man that's a bit sad to hear. I can't really say about back disorder but I had bad posture. Quite unfit and used to sit all day. If it's possible hit the gym. It helps a lot. After doing it for almost a year nearly all my body issues are gone. Also for hair try hair transplant. My elder brother got nearly bald but after this he started to show us hair growth. Also, try to get up and take things in your own hand man. Yeah, it takes a lot of willpower to correct yourself but it pays of at the end. And at the end of the day you will be satisfied and proud of yourself. Hey, if you are feeling down or need someone to talk to you can DM me. Have a nice day. Being overly whorish, it's not being too adventurous during sex. I'm sure everyone likes a freak, or having sex too soon I don't think having sex on a first date is a sign of you being a whore. But there is a certain amount of purity I enjoy in a woman almost to maturity to her that signals that she doesn't just give in to luster and can control herself even in very intense romantic settings. I'm not talking about playing hard to get which is extremely obvious and just as much of a turn off. When a girl knows how to be flirty and yet at the same time makes it feel like I'm actually hunting a girl down, sounds oddly arpy. Even if I know she's 10,000% down. It makes me like her more than I probably would have. When she's too willing to drop her panties it's almost like a chicken plucking its own feathers then throwing itself on an open fire. Or getting your first job only to inherit one billion dollars. It's cool and I'd still enjoy it, but extremely dissatisfying at the same time. People who don't respect animals especially people that don't talk respectfully with them. Used to know a guy who'd say my dog's name really aggressively or just grab her while she was walking past BC. She didn't like him and never stayed close to him, for obvious reasons. I always called him out on it and tried to explain how to approach her with more care and respect. He never changed his ways. A couple of weeks later he called me a whore for not wanting to sleep with him and kept stalking me for months after I blocked him. Every person that's ever treated animals with disrespect around me has been utter trash. Ghetto culture. I've never found it hard to avoid thankfully. I refuse to allow it near my life. Low IQ people in general. Like I don't hate them or wish them ill. I just don't want to be involved or show support and so I don't. No exceptions really. Cigarettes. It's the worst thing. Also, fat people. I don't really need to elaborate. It's ugly and usually comes with personality disorders and self-esteem issues. And last, some, most MTF transgender folks. Just in general it grosses me the fuck out. Probably because I'm also transgender and don't like the reflection rough. I'm overexposed to these folks. And so bias harder than others I assume. No bigotry intended. Talking negatively about people slash not filtering thoughts. I love my boyfriend so dearly but there is not a thing in the world that turns me off more than when he makes unnecessary comments about people to me. Maybe what they are wearing or something they are doing just kind of not filtering his thoughts. I'm a super live and let live person. And I can't stand when someone wants to talk negatively about others. Also, guys, or girls, that lie unnecessarily. I've been with or on dates with guys that will lie to impress you or sound like someone they aren't. But it's always super obvious and I just get secondhand embarrassment. All this while knowing not to ever trust them. When she grabs my balls and twists them, I say, ouch. Can you please not do that? It hurts and her nails are digging into me. Then she just laughs and gets this crazy look in her eyes. She twists harder and harder. I struggle to free myself but I can't pull away without the risk of tearing something off. Tears stream down my face and she licks them off my cheeks. I feel my body start to break into a cold sweat as I notice her eyes seem to be glowing red. A howl is released from her vocal cords that nearly collapses my eardrums. I'm crying and thrusting as she wails louder and twists harder than ever before. I climax and she finally releases her grip on my testicles and I ask her not to do that again next time, but sure enough. I read that as full body odor. It's the worst when some owns whole fucking body or even their body and house and car all have one unifying scent which is usually mellow but I find it so disgusting even though I know they probably just don't know how to wash clothes properly. 